everyone, this is People in Power, and I'm Summer El Shahat. On today's program, the Million Dollar Militia. Early this year, a rare bright spot emerged in America's longest war. The Shinwari tribe of eastern Afghanistan signed a treaty pledging to expel the Taliban from their territory and to end poppy cultivation and heroin production. In return, the U.S. military pledged $1 million in aid to be paid directly to the Shinwari, bypassing the Afghan government in the process. Comparisons were immediately drawn to the awakening movement in Iraq, where Sunni tribal militias were hired to fight the insurgency. Others warned that bypassing the Afghan government in this way could undermine an already fragile state. So who are America's new tribal allies, and can they really help bring lasting stability to Afghanistan? Filmmakers Rick Rowley and Jason Motler have been finding out. The road to Jalalabad, the largest city in eastern Afghanistan and the gateway to Pakistan. The British entered and retreated from Afghanistan along this route. The Soviets held Jalalabad as their strategic center in the east, and the Taliban conquered it in 1996 on their way to the capital. Driving in from Kabul, we pass the wreckage of a recent Taliban attack. But on the whole, Jalalabad remains one of the safest cities in Afghanistan. At the NATO base here, U.S. Army Major T.G. Taylor shows us a copy of a smudged treaty, signed and marked with thumbprints, that he says goes a long way to explaining the relative security here. The uh, Shinwari Tribal Pact is an agreement amongst tribal elders within the Shinwari tribe that they would uh, stand up against the Taliban, they wouldn't allow the Taliban to operate in their areas, that they would uh, not allow poppy cultivation or, or uh, processing in their areas, and that they would not stand for corruption in the Afghan government. Major Taylor shows us photos of the signing ceremony, which took place this January. He says that before the pact was signed, Shinwari tribal areas were a hotbed of insurgent activity, that because of their strategic location, destabilize the entire province. The Shinwari tribe is mainly focused in the uh, eastern part of Nangarhar province. The area encompasses the area around Torkham Gate, which is the main thoroughfare from uh, Pakistan into Afghanistan all the way into Kabul. Um, the area has previously been, been uh, home to lots of criminal activity, uh, IED facilitation, uh, poppy uh, cultivation as well as poppy uh, uh, processing for heroin. Major Taylor hopes that deals like the Shinwari Pact can be replicated across the country. With a weak Afghan state accused of rampant fraud and corruption, and an Afghan army incapable of bringing security, NATO and the U.S. are looking to tribal allies in their fight against the Taliban. Unfortunately, the Afghan security forces don't have the capacity right now, um, nor are all, all the assets to, uh, to conduct operations throughout the entire area, um, to provide security in, throughout the entire area. <laughs> Afghan people, Pashtun people, Shinwari people have been securing themselves for thousands of years. Um, if they have a will to secure their area, then they'll secure their area. That's, that's never an issue, never been an issue. Two bombs hit Jalalabad during morning rush hour, but the road south into Shinwari territory remains clear. Billboards rise out of the harsh landscape, recruiting for the Afghan army, but the writ of the central government barely reaches past the city limits. We drive through what was once the country's most famous opium market, and past wheat fields where poppy was grown before the Shinwari tribal leaders signed their pact. In Achin, outside of a crumbling mud brick fortress, we meet Zarjan, the police subcommander. He doesn't wear a uniform because he says his authority comes from his tribal connections, not from the Afghan state. 
په اصطلاح په دولتونو په نظامي هغه کې دغه سیاغه ده چې کومه نیرو ښه استفاده کوي او ښه کوي وي هماغه سړی په کار اچوي نو زه دغه ځمکه چې تاسو ګورئ دغه سرحده د جګ جل لوړ لوړ سرونه چې ګورئ او به ماته کې افغانستان دی چې اوبه هغې خوا ته مایدې سره هغه پاکستان دی او کم ورسره ولاړ دی او کم چې نه وي یعنې دولت هېڅ نه شي کولی چې په داسې غرانیو سیمو کې امنیت راولي روسان ولیان خو شپېته هلیکاپټر ورسره و څوارلس سره تیارې و دغه جېټ و شپېته هلیکاپټر او څوارلس سره دغه جېټ تیارې وې دا اوس چې ته ولیاړې دې ځای باندې Zarjan says that the credit for the security here belongs to two tribal elders called Malaks in Pashto, who led the push for the Shinwari Pact, Malak Niez and Malak Usman. We are surrounded by evidence of the changes they have brought here. These fields, which were once planted with opium poppy, are now sown with wheat. <laughs> شپېته فیصده غنم و نو د قومي تړون له مخې سږ د دوا د پاره هم نه معلومېږي A farmer interrupts Zarjan, saying that the government has failed to follow through on its promise to deliver aid in exchange for giving up poppy. Do you think all of the farmers would go back to growing poppy if things do not change? Zarjan warns that American aid money is key to keeping the tribes on side. If tribal leaders do not get more money, not only will the poppy return, but security here could deteriorate rapidly. چې دلته ډېره قرباني ملک نیاز دوی چې یعنې د مخالفینو په مقابل کې ورکړي دا همدغه دوه قومونو ورکړه په دې یو کشر په صفت یو مسؤل په صفت خواهش دا دی که هغه پی آر ټي دي که هغه خارجي دوستان دي که هغه داخلي حکومت دی چې دغسې سرحداتو ته دغسې غرنیو سیمو ته که دوی ورته کار پیدا کړي دا نور هم کوي کېږي نور هم د اختلافات د منځه ځي او که بېکاره شو بیا خدای نه خاصه هر کېږي On the road back, we meet one of the men who Zarjan credits with bringing security here, Malik Niaz. Niaz is accompanied by a small contingent of armed men, and even though Zarjan is the police commander, it is clear to everyone who is in charge here. Niaz's men escort us through the foothills, and we meet the local Shinwari elder, Malik Usman. We recognize both Niaz and Usman from the photos Major Taylor showed us back on base. فقط د دې سپین غره نه نیولې تر د دې غره سره بورې دا زموږ د سپین غره ساحه ده په دې کې خو مطلق طالبان نه د ورځې ګرځي چې ونه د شپې ځکه دلته طالبان سره ډېر کلک مقاومت کړو خپل ځان مرګ ته نه ګورو مطلب طالب نه بریږي نو که چېرته دلته ګډوډي جوړه شي بیا طالبانو لیر خلاصېږي بیا به ټول ننګرهار کې امن نه وي بالکل دا در Malak Usman and Malak Niaz were the main tribal elders pushing for the Shinwari Pact, and they say they are holding the line against the Taliban for the entire province. But they are also fierce critics of the Afghan government. The Afghanistan power is the power of the country. The government is very strong. Absolutely. The government is the power of the country. 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 د افغانستان دولت هماغه دولت لکه څنګه چې د رباني دولت و هر څوک چې قومندان و په چوکۍ ناست و پاچا و The Shinwari Pact took Afghan officials by surprise. The military neither consulted with the government nor notified it of the pact or the aid deal until announcing them publicly. The military also decided to channel the $1 million in development projects directly through tribal leaders, bypassing the Afghan government, which many here see as corrupt. The U.S. considers Niaz and Usman to be powerful allies in their war against the Taliban, but some analysts warn that they risk undermining the state in feeding long-term instability. If the U.S. military or any other international actor uh, deals directly with tribes or part of tribes or local strongmen that undermines the state uh, they are supposed to build here. Tomas Rutig is the co-director of the Afghan Analyst Network, an influential think tank based in Kabul and Berlin. Rutig has been working in Afghanistan since 1983. Tribal institutions, that's kind of fallback positions when the state is collapsing, then 
tribal institutions can fill a gap for a while. But we also have to be conscious that these are not democratic institutions. We were mandated to stabilize and support the central government that we should have done with all the institutions involved. If you have a lot of money and you put it into so-called tribal militias, then you undermine the institutions you want to build. Rutig is not alone in his concern about the program. In Jalalabad, the provincial governor, Gul Aga Shirzai, has become the program's most powerful critic. We wait in Jalalabad for a chance to meet with the governor. At first, Shirzai's spokesman says he will be happy to speak with us, but days pass and the governor remains indisposed. Shirzai has been widely accused of corruption in the international press, and he has his hands full with local political crises. In the governor's absence, we meet with Nangahar's highest-ranking elected official, Nasratullah Arsela, the president of the provincial council. Nasratullah questions Governor Shirzai's motives for opposing the American aid deal with the Shinwari. As if uh, Americans support through Shirzai, that he will take his, uh, his share in uh, something. Uh, for, this, for this only reason, he, he was against him. Uh, and uh, he is not thinking deep in the interest of the people. It's only his chair to yourself, Bakhtiri, or Kulharat, Barabari, with the Nasratullah understands the difficulties the Americans face working through a state that is seen by many Afghans as corrupt and illegitimate. But he says working directly with the tribes is even more problematic. Well, the thing is, what you mean when you say tribe? There are a lot of tribes in Afghanistan, and uh, we very often make the mistake to take them as a single, coherent, stable, eternal unit, and that's not what the reality is in Afghanistan. A lot of that is shifting, has been undermined, broken during the last 30 years of internal turmoil here in Afghanistan. So very often, if you don't know enough about tribal or inner tribal dynamics, uh, you might step into a minefield of uh, old conflicts. One part of the tribe was kind of picked as the good guys, and the others then find themselves uh, probably on the bad side, or at least not on the side to which is uh, subsidized and uh, financed. And that uh, usually deepens conflicts rather than remedying them. Divisions within the tribes began to surface soon after the Shinwari Pact was signed. Malak Niaz and Malak Usman see the Americans as their key partners, but Governor Shirzai has also cultivated his own Shinwari tribal allies. <laughs> Haji Mullajan is a Shinwari tribal elder and a candidate for provincial council. His subtribe, the Ali Sharhel, are longtime rivals of Malak Niaz and Malak Usman's subtribe, the Sipai. He says he has been cut out of aid from the Americans. program <laughs> Malik Niaz and Malik Usman, um, two very powerful individuals here in southern Nangahar, um, leaders of the Shinwari tribe, and they've got a lot, of, a lot of pull with the people and with the government as well. Um, we have really 
partnered with those two individuals to uh, further our relationship with the Shinwari tribe. Captain Robert Bestrek is the company commander on forward operating base Shinwar in the heart of Shinwari territory. Southern Nangahar is home to five main Shinwari sub-tribes, but the army here seems unaware of some of the fault lines within their new tribal allies. What sub-tribes inside the Shinwari tribe are you guys working with? Now? Well, I know there's there's a multitude, but um, down here in in Southern Nangahar, we're we're dealing with the Ashkar Ashkael uh, Asher Kyle tribe. You know, the wording uh, I'll get right probably when we leave next year, but uh, and that's one of the main players down here in uh, in the south. Do you know Haji Mojo? I have not heard that name. Um, do you have any further information? Um, he's from the Ali Sharkel sub-tribe. Okay. Um, no, I haven't, I haven't heard information on him. Uh, I'll have to do some research. Okay. Sorry. Tension continued to build within the Shinwari, and then, suddenly, the tribe that had signed a treaty to fight the Taliban together turned their guns on each other. The Sipai and the Ali Sherhel sub-tribes have competed for generations over control of this rocky strip of land, and in April, that struggle erupted into a full-blown battle. Somewhere between 10 and 20 people were killed, some of them buried in this graveyard near where they fell, but that is the only thing that everyone can agree on. Kalajasmukasanshidanshu, <laughs> Uh, the Ali Sharhel say the Sipai attacked with a militia supported by the Americans. The Sipai say the Ali Sharhel attacked with the support of the government. But back on base, Major Taylor downplayed the incident. Uh, nowhere in the Shinwari, in the Shinwari area, are there any? Is there a tribal militia? Um, so just put that aside. It was a problem. There were people who were arguing with each other. There were there were even demonstrations and some protests that were not necessarily peaceful. Um, so it did disrupt things. But uh, you know, once it was it's resolved, things are back to being to being peaceful in the area. Major Taylor assures us that there are no militias here, the conflict has been resolved, and that the not necessarily peaceful protests are a thing of the past. But in Achin, residents seem less certain. The market here has all but closed down because of the fighting. <laughs> Whether or not the fighting will erupt again, tension inside the tribe remains high. Since the Shinwari Pact was signed, many more tribesmen have killed each other than have died in combat with the Taliban. And the division between the two sub-tribes has solidified. One side sees the U.S. military as its key partner, the other supports the provincial governor. A month after our first request, Governor Shirzai finally agrees to meet with us. His offices are in the Winter Palace of the last king of Afghanistan. Governor Shirzai demands that the Americans end their direct aid to tribal leaders. The 
دا سسٹم غلط ہے دا ناکام پالیسی دا باید پاچا میں یو دی کرزہ حساب دی باید طبقہ پر طبقہ میں دا نظام جور سی Back in Achin, the land dispute drags on without resolution. The Sipai tribe holds a jirga, a meeting of tribal elders, at Malik Usman's house. The Sipai say the Taliban, the government, and the Ali Sherkhel are all conspiring against them. They are particularly incensed at Haji Mullajan's relationship to the governor and his candidacy for provincial council. Back on forward operating base Shinwar, Captain Bestrek's men are out surveying some of the U.S. funded development projects in Shinwari territory. There has been a sharp uptick in roadside bombs on the main highway and a string of rocket attacks on American bases here, but the Chinwari Pact is holding, and Nangaha remains relatively secure compared to neighboring provinces. In one year, the Americans hope to begin the process of drawing down their forces and handing over control of security to Afghans. But with a weak Afghan state that is seen by many here as corrupt and illegitimate, the U.S. is turning increasingly to local forces to fill the political and military gaps. It is, at best, a delicate balancing act. At worst, it is a self-defeating strategy. Not only does the military run the risk of unconsciously stepping into the middle of intra-tribal feuds, but more fundamentally, by handing over control of vital state functions like security and development to sub-state actors, the military is undermining the very government that it hopes to build. Very often then we go for the shortcut, we see problems, and then we say, okay, we go with a strongman or with a local influential people, uh, which for me is a euphemism. Uh, people are currently strong because they have uh, firepower and they have not been disarmed as they should have been, uh, and because they were able to use that firepower to bring themselves uh, into elected uh, positions and also accumulate a lot of economic wealth. I mean, we are just seeing that the gap is uh, uh, widening here enormously. In Nangahar, the fight between the Sipai and the Ali Sherkhel continues. But there is one thing both sides can agree on. The U.S. military and the Afghan government might be useful, but they are only temporary allies. When the time comes, both are prepared to fend for themselves. That's it for this edition of People in Power. If you'd like to comment on our report or any other matter, we'd love to hear from you on the usual address, aljazeera.net forward slash English. Until next time, bye-bye.